Are we on? We're on. Oh. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Hey, it's the Teakles again. Lucky you guys. One of the things we like about Galilee is they started Sunday school up again. So we have our two little grandsons going. <clears throat> they're four. I'm sorry, they're not four. They're five and six years old. Um, and we hope, if all goes well, that you will be able to see them during this evening. So take it away. I just want to interrupt real quick before we get to tonight's opening hymn to let you know that we have resumed in-person Bible study for our youth. They are meeting at 9.30 a.m. Sunday mornings in the trailer behind the church. Those classes will continue for another four more weeks, at which point we will pick up in the fall with brand new uh, reopening of Sunday school. We are continuing our education for adults in the fellowship hall. This week, we're going through characters of the Bible. This week, we're getting into the prophet Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. I look forward to seeing everyone there. You are all invited to come join us for coffee and donuts. And we're going to do a Bible study over the summer regarding expository apologetics. Well, what is that? Well, we're going to do another intro another night. I'm going to have more information for you on that. But just keep an eye out for that video because it's going to be a standalone video and it's going to have a lot of information in it. Looking forward to seeing everyone there. Um, and if you're curious about what your kids are learning in Bible study, Miss Jones sent us a nice little video this week. I'm going to go ahead and share that with you guys right now. And what are the, you've heard a Bible story about, look at this guy. You heard a Bible story about? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Okay. Wow. They're, they're friends with who? God. And another God. guy named D D Dream. Dan Drink. Daniel. Drink. And what happened to Daniel. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Look up here. They got a nation to the king. And they got thrown into a fire pit. Ooh. In the, did did in they die? No. What, why not? Their clothes didn't even smell like smoke. <gasps> so they were in there all by themselves, those three guys? No, there were Jesus. Yeah. Who was it, that Dodge? Who was in there with him? With Jesus. <gasps> but he was, but. And they, and they didn't even smell like smoke. Awesome. Okay. The so now, ends. The end. So now look at the camera and say, enjoy this evening's service. Look at the camera and say, enjoy this evening's service. Try it again, Finley. Look at the camera. Ready? Enjoy this evening's service. All right. Awesome. Now, can both of you together say it? Ready? Look at the camera. Dodge. Say it with your brother. Ready? Enjoy your evening service. Let's try it one more time. You're going to say together, enjoy this evening service. Look at the camera and say, Enjoy this evening service. Cool. Thank you, Joan, so much for grabbing that. That was that was so awesome. Seeing, seeing your grandkids. They're... they're Gosh, they are so funny. Anyway, I'm going to hand it over to the Galilee Singers now. We're going to open up tonight's service.
continue then with our opening versicles. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. about you start off with the first reading. All right. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 12. You will say in that day, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, for though you were angry with me, your anger turned away that you might comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid, for the Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation, and you will say in that day, Give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples, proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be made known in all the earth. Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitant of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Isn't that exciting? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Looking up. Smile. And I count one, two, three. <laughs> the second reading is from James 1, 16 through 21. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be kind of first fruits of his creatures. Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, 
slow to speak, slow to anger. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you, Gordon and Joan, for leading us in our worship at home, the tremendous Teakles. We thank you for all that you do at Galilee in leading our congregation and also in sharing your gifts with us, sharing your home as we worship together tonight. Thank you, Chris, for the wonderful message you're about to share and putting all this together. And thank you to our wonderful Galilee worship song leaders. Tonight's catechism reading is going to be a couple parts. First comes from the third article of the Apostles' Creed and its meaning from Luther's catechism. And that is, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the one true faith. In the same way, he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. The next part of the catechism is the table of duties. First off, for all citizens. We're told, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. And then from Romans 13, it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also because of conscience. This is why you also pay taxes. For the authorities are God's servants who give their full time to governing. Give everyone to whom you owe. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. Then from 1 Timothy 2, I urge then, first of all, that requests, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and for all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God, our Savior. Then from Titus 3, remind the people to be subject to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready to do whatever is good. And finally, from 1 Peter 2, Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every authority instituted among men, whether to the king as a supreme authority or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and commend those who do right. And then finally, to workers of all kinds from Ephesians 6. Slaves, obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and with sincerity of heart, just as you would obey Christ. Obey them not only to win their favor with when their eye is on you, but like slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from your heart, serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not men, because you know that the Lord will reward everyone for whatever good he does, whether he is a slave or free. And then finally to everyone from Romans 13. The commandments are summed up in this one rule, love your neighbor as yourself. And then he says in 1 Timothy chapter 2, I urge that Request, prayers, intercession, thanksgiving be made for everyone. And then from the final, let each his lesson learn with care, and all the household well shall fare. Take it away, Chris. Thank you to Gordon and Joan Teagle for opening up this week's service and for the readings. Pastor Matt, for this week's catechism lesson on the third article of the Apostles' Creed and the always important table of duties. I don't think we spent enough time reviewing those. Last but not least, a big shout out for the Galilee singers who lead us in glorious hymnal devotions each and every week. And what they do each and every week is integral to this week's message. But before we dive into tonight's message, let's join together in a brief time of prayer. Lord God, bless your word wherever it is proclaimed. Make it a word of power and of peace to convert those not yet your own and to confirm those who have come to the saving faith. May your word pass from the ear to the heart from the heart to the lips, and from the lips to the life that, as you have promised, your word may achieve the purpose for which you send it. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear saints, as we are all saints in the eyes of the Lord, we as the collective worshipers of the living God have used music in part or in whole to celebrate and worship the triune God. 
The Psalms and the Songs of Solomon were recorded as written poems that were most likely accompanied by instrumental music of lyres, drums, tambourines, trumpets, and the like. The Apostle Paul even once wrote about music of worship in worship of the Lord in his letter to the church at Ephesus. Addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. The word hymn comes from the Greek word hymnos, which means a song of praise. Hymns have been written and evolved over the centuries to reflect the worship and the worshipers in the seats of the pews of that day and that historical period. And tonight, as we look at the writing of Isaiah, you'll notice some, something very familiar about tonight's text. This text has been used in part by the authors of the composer of the Old Testament Canticle, which is a newer hymn, but definitely has a traditional sound and a traditional feel to it. Almost all the text we'll review tonight is used in the, this hymnos. The Lord is my strength and my song. Now, the text of Isaiah is almost compiled as if it is a Bible in miniature. There are 66 chapters in this book. There are also 66 books in the Bible, with the first 39 focusing on the actions of idolatrous men, like the Old Testament, and the last 27 chapters focusing on a message of hope and salvation. We touch on that message of salvation tonight as we traverse the text we share tonight, even though our text falls within that first 39 chapters. Now, this book was written some 700 years before Jesus was to arrive and live, to live and fulfill his earthly ministry. And some of the prophecies of Isaiah's writings are difficult to dispute that they point to Jesus. We spent a few weeks discussing this book in our Sunday Bible study, which takes place in the Fellowship Hall at Galilee every Sunday between the 8 a.m. and the 1045 services. Isaiah was called to prophesy to the land of Judah, which was in the midst of experiencing 40 years of great prosperity and peace. And the prophet was nonetheless called to preach and teach to the people who had turned a deaf ear to the ways, the customs, and the laws of God the Father. They had alienated him, which created a need for Isaiah's pronouncements of judgment, pronouncements and declarations made in the hope that God's chosen people would return to him. Now, we've set up how our who knows is integrated with this beautiful text written by the hand of Isaiah. Now, it's time to kind of actually dive into it now. So we'll look at each verse in tonight, tonight's chapter, all six of them, and that will cover the entire chapter. It's a short one, but it doesn't lack in importance. And our chapter opens tonight. You will say in that day, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, for though you were angry with me, your anger turned away that you might comfort me. Isaiah is telling the people of Judah, you, singular you, will say on the day when things fall apart, I'll give thanks to you, Jehovah, or Jehovah, rather. And even though I didn't listen to you, I didn't follow you, and I didn't abide by your ceremonial, your moral, your civil laws you gave us as recorded in the books of Deuteronomy and Leviticus, even though I turned away from you and did all the things you told me not to do, you turned the other cheek and comforted me, a poor and miserable sinner. You, God, did not turn away from me, even though the singular form of you is used in this writing here. This applies to all of you. And I am included in that you. We turn to God for comfort, and the Good Shepherd does not disappoint us. Often verses are broken into different notations that use an A and a B notation to make it easier to speak about the proper context of a lengthier verse. And tonight we have that in verse 2 of the text. And it reads, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and I will not be afraid. And then we get into the chorus of tonight's hymnos, which is also the B of the verse. For the Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Now, this is the third time we've heard this exact verse, first recorded in Exodus and again in Psalm 118. Whenever we encounter those things, the Lord wants us to hear, to know, to remember. We encounter them three times, and this is no exception. Behold, God is my salvation. He has become my salvation. The salvation of the Lord is a gift, a gift that comes to us by his strength, 
by his grace, and by his love for us. Without that promise we've been given tonight of his salvation, the hope that is within us can be lost. This salvation is given to us not as an empty promise, but as a completed transaction. The Apostle Paul reiterates that for us again in his letter to the church at Ephesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. You have been saved through faith. Transaction complete. But the visual promise of salvation continues in the next verse. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. The Hebrew word for you in this verse is now the plural you, all of us. The wells of salvation run very, very deep. One could even say endlessly. With joy, with strength, with song, we draw from the wells of the saving faith. Isaiah continues here. And he will say in that day, Give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples, proclaim that his name is exalted. Isaiah tells us here to give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, worship him in all glory and honor, much the way we do not only here tonight, but as we gather collectively for our Saturday and Sunday services. The digital age has made this command more interesting as we broadcast our services out to the world every week, allowing others to gather with us to give thanks to the Lord, to call upon his name in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord within our hearts, as we heard in our opening tonight. Even though we don't physically occupy the same space, it's truly amazing. And while we are gathered here week after week, we make his deeds known through our pericope, which is that fancy word I've used before. It's basically just a list of the scriptural readings that we do week after week. And through our songs, our humnos, our readings, and our time in prayer, yes, even our bloopers, we rightly and justly proclaim to all the world that he is truly the exalted living triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The closing verse of, of this week's Old Testament reading, in the last two verses of this chapter, they are recorded by Isaiah like this. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this, made be, no Let this be made known in all the earth. Shout and sing with joy, O inhabitants of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. God has demonstrated his power, his grace, and his salvation among his people by saving them. And this text confirms this. It's also not often that God is referred to as the Holy One of Israel throughout the Old Testament, but it's most commonly used in the writings of Isaiah. Holy and holiness includes all the attributes of perfection that distinguish God from his creatures. Yet, even though we are fallen, sinful creatures, God entered into a covenant with Israel, his chosen servant for salvation. And no matter how many times the people of Israel failed to abide by and in God, there were consequences, but there was also that affirmation of salvation that is once again promised in tonight's reading, delivered by the Good Shepherd. Personally, it's a joy and a privilege to listen to Mr. Rob Banger belt out this hymnos week after week. Kudos to the hymn writers, because this hymn, it also has a catchy tune, it sticks in my head. However, I find that I listen to this hymn two times a week, so when I don't watch the live broadcast of our weekly service, I am very guilty of skipping over the prayers, the hymns, and even the message I do every week. And, but why do I need to watch the hymns? I know what they are. I've spent time editing and splicing everything together, but that doesn't, that doesn't pay homage and honor to the Lord by picking and choosing the parts of the service I choose to watch each, each week. The service is accumulated in a specific fashion to worship, honor, and glorify the Lord. I'm turning away from the Lord by not joining in with my brothers and sisters to worship and praise the Lord on high. Picking and choosing the parts of the service I want to watch versus what I don't want to watch because I've seen it several times or because it's remained pretty much unedited for the last several weeks, that's an unjust injustice to God. Even though I behave in that manner, his anger is turned away and his salvation and his grace comforts me. And it should comfort all of you as well. As the Lord's people, it's our responsibility to address one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, proclaiming God's deeds to all the people of the earth. 
Those who know the word are obligated and blessed to go forth and proclaim the Lord's saving work. The Lord gives us what we need to share his salvation with the world. He provides us strength and courage to bear song and all the other who knows before the nations of the world. He provides us with the knowledge and the fortitude to testify what he accomplishes with his salvation. Last but not least, he provided the atonement for our sins, and the blood, and the death, and the resurrection of Christ Jesus. Without the ultimate sacrifice of the Christ Jesus hanging on the cross for the salvation and for our forgiveness, our journey through the Bible would have ended right here in this chapter tonight. Well, they ran off and sang about the salvation of God, the end. Our story, if you will, does not end here. Our humnos does not end with the words of Isaiah. Our humnos goes on for another 2,700 years and beyond as we carry our songs and our hymns out into the world to share the good news, the Evangelion, of Christ's redeeming sacrifice, a sacrifice that grants us salvation and the hope of eternal life in heaven with him. In Christ's precious name we pray. Amen. for this day. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon, with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Christian Church here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For those who labor, for those who work in is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widow and orphan, and for all those in prison. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and the dying, and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those in our church family and our homes, as well as those who are scattered abroad in need of our prayers and petitions on this day, that we now lift up to you, Lord, in the silence of our hearts.
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, and learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank, thank you, you, my Heavenly Father, Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Conclude with the blessing. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now may the Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful evening, and may peace be with you. Thank you for joining us in our worship service today. If you are in the Pasadena, Maryland area and are looking for a church home, we would love to meet with you and give you more information on our family here at Galilee. Please give us a call here at the telephone number below. We would love to hear from you. If you are not in the Pasadena, Maryland area, but you are looking for a church home, again, please let us know so we can do our best to get you pointed in the right direction. Thank you to everyone who helped and participated during our service this weekend. We are truly blessed to have such a generous and faithful congregation devoted to sharing the word of Jesus Christ with you. And last but not least, if you enjoyed today's service, please click the like or the subscribe buttons to let us know that you enjoyed it. Please leave us comments if you so desire and sign up to receive notifications for our Saturday, our Sunday, and our Wednesday worship at home services. Have a blessed day. God be praised. Thank you. Tremendous teakles. Wait, did I say terrific teakles? Tremendous. I can't remember what I called what I said. The stentabulous teakles. The amazingly gifted, talented, talented teakles. How did I say that on the email? I forgot. Oh, I got the email right here.
by the word of truth, <laughs> it's jacked. <laughs> One, two, three. No, we're going to start again. Yeah. <laughs> This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. We heard it three times. So for great is your midst, and it great for your. Let's try that again. Oh. So, Chris, you're supposed to. Uh, <laughs> Make him <it> look good. <laughs> so delete that. The amazing teakles. Oh, I thought I used the T word there. Okay. I'm recording this. Hit the camera and say, Enjoy this evening service! Try it again, Finn. <laughs> <laughs>